Hi, welcome to MarkCycleRepairs.com. Today we're looking at this baffling motor here. This is the mid-drive motor. And here we are. This is what the motor actually looks like. And I had to take it all apart because it was slipping. <coughs> and initially I thought it would be some of the cogs slipping. But it turns out it's not. I'll just try and get the camera lined up for that. Yeah, so initially I thought it was the cog slipping, but it turns out it wasn't. And we had to take the whole motor apart inside here. And absolutely everything apart. So this is the motor itself. And then the other side here, you have this part here. We have to unplug all the wires. And it's a right pain and this bit here. Initially I thought this was slipping here on the cog and the clutch wasn't working because we had the old clutch and it was really chewed up. So I put the new clutch in which fits inside there and you see now it's clicking quite nicely. You can hear that. So the new clutch is all in. And this is all alright, it doesn't look chewed up or anything. So that is back inside here. And it just slides in. And now we have the uh, the root of the problem, which took a lot of investigation, and this is it. It is that this cog here runs this thing here, but it, bizarrely it has these <coughs> one-way bearings inside, which didn't make any sense before because I've never seen them before but if you look carefully inside there's um, I don't know if you can see that there's three sets of bearings in there there's two slim ones on the outside and the center one which is um, a one-way bearing one-way roller bearing they call it so when you spin it it spins freely this way it spins freely this way but when you spin the other way it won't spin it so it locks up and that's what gives it the drive and looking at everything that must have been what was the issue because none of the uh, other bits were chewed up so just got a new one just came in the post today so we're going to stick that on so let's uh, clean this up before we put it in You can see if you look carefully, uh, let's try and get it in front of the camera. Where's the camera? There. You can see the line on it in the middle where the bearings are obviously rubbing and gripping. It's made it extra shiny. And also you can see the teeth here. There we go. You can see the teeth. Oh, where's the camera? There's a camera. There's a camera. You can see the teeth. They're slightly worn, but they're not slipping yet. And these bits are really hard to find because everything's from China, basically. So let's put the new cog on and see what it feels like. This is the new cog and it goes on this way with the this bit which is more flush here. This side is more flush goes on this end and the one which is recessed more goes on the other side so let's put it all in and it seems to work fine just like the old one I mean the old one still grips but when you put it in it just feels a bit different so that one seems alright 
so we'll put it back together. But yeah, now, I don't know if you can see that, let me move the chair and kneel down. Might be able to see it better now. If you can see inside. So, put that there. Put this in the hole. Take this cover off. Put this in the hole. And it slots in like that. So now you can see it is in the hole. If you can see that, it's in the hole. Now there's a couple of circlip. Um, circle clips that go on it. Oh, sorry, this camera's not the easiest thing. But yeah. So we've got them down here. These little circle clip things, they need the circle clip pliers. Stick them on. Make sure it's pushed in. And open it up, get it in, pop it on. And then if you've got a little screwdriver, uh, where's my little screwdriver? We can just uh, poke it on and make sure it goes into the slot. And this just fits down and clicks into the slot. All the way around. There you go, clicked in. So that's in nicely now. And now we put the new the new cog on. Uh, again with the flush side on the inside and the uh, recess side on this side. This rubber thing's slightly in the way, so you have to just heal it back a little bit. Slots in like that, and then put the other circlip on. Put it in the pliers, and push it on. And hopefully it will fit on. Oh, it seems a bit loose this one. But try and push, push it on with a screwdriver. And get it to click in. Um, has that clicked in? Just loosen it off so I can push it in. Yeah, that's all clicked in now. So that's all good. So um, now I have to put the motor back in and a bit of grease on it. So let us put this cover back on. This is the cover that goes on here with the bearing on the outside. Put this cover back on. There's a few countersunk screws that hold it on. Down here in a pile of screws. It's important to get a screwdriver the exact size for it so that you don't chew up the head because these need to sit flush. In here. This one is behind the rubber cover, just in the corner. Like so. And once they're all in, just gently do them up tighter to get it all flush. Just 
do that up as tight as you can without slipping the screwdriver. There you go. And now we're ready to put this all back together, which is the fiddly part. Right, let me just grab a bit of uh, grease. Not that one, the other one. Some of this uh, white lithium grease. And you can... Ooh. As you can see, it's running out. Put a little bit on the screwdriver and we dab a bit on some of the teeth in here. Spin it around a bit, put some on the teeth. So we've got a bit on and put a bit on the on uh, these ones as well. Should be alright. Right, I have some grease. Now let's try to put it back together. Now, this is the tricky bit because these three wires need to go through the holes, and this thing here has to plug into here, which is the right pane. So, the fiddly bit. I don't think I'll be able to show it that well on the camera. Uh, yeah, these three wires plug into these three things. Firstly, feed these wires through the holes. Like so. And then gently wiggle it all. Pull the wires through a bit. And just jiggle it around a bit. And there you go. So now we're almost in. Just want to get it lined up with the screw holes. Yeah, there's a few metal pins there. Don't know if you can see that. Just get that lined up. And then it should almost press into place. You've got to be very careful because you don't want to mess up that fitting with the with the um, pins on it. Let me get our three mil Allen key. And put the screws back in. I think there's four screws on this one. Evenly around the outside. And put them all in. Just put them all in loosely to start with. And then we can pinch them all up at the end. Just trying to be delicate because that the pins in the circuit board you don't want to mess that up. So you're going to get them all to pull in relatively evenly. You can just feel it as you're doing it as it gets a bit stiffer. You're slowly pulling it together. Like that. Getting nice and tight now. It's really tricky to see this. Right, they seem pretty tight. Just hope it works this time because last time. It still slipped, so I'm guessing and hoping it was that clutch bearings in that plastic cog. So now that's back together. 
have to plug in these wires. I should just be able to slot them in. Obviously the same colour to the same colour. Green one to the green one, blue to the blue. And for some reason they don't line up. The yellow and blue ones. I don't know why. I just put it back in how it was. Now when we originally took it apart, these were all sealed up in the ends there with some white sealant. So we can go back and do that. I just want to put it together first to check it's all working. Just want to keep this rubber thing in place. And then you just kind of have to bend the cables in and squash it all back together in the loop. It all fits. Just got to be relatively careful so you don't mess up any of these wires. Just jiggle it all around. Uh, this side has got three of the same bolts these uh, so you need a three mil allen key it's just a bit tricky to hold it in place and get them to go in at the same time there we go I think that's in now the other two and there we go it's going in Just gently pull it together and then the other one is down the bottom here can't really see it that well, but um, yeah. now we've got the others in, goes in a bit smoother, but yeah, just tighten these all up slowly, just want to make sure the rubber gasket is still intact in the right place. I think on some of the other models they have different gaskets, but these is it's like rubber on these ones. And yeah, almost back together. And now we should be able to test it. <clears throat> so with this bike here, we'll just turn the battery on. And the display, just hold that for a second. And then we should be able to push the throttle here. And it moves. And let me just push this in, get it all lined up. And you can leave a slight gap so you can see the cog to see how it's working. Uh, yep, it all seems to be fixed. So that was the issue. You can just about see both of the cogs moving if I have it half open. Oh, I'm relieved that's fixed because that was a right pain in the arse. So yeah, I'll screw that back on and then it's all back together. So if it is slipping, this is obviously the issue. These bearings inside here that is the issue if it slips under power the roller bearings in the middle the one-way bearings is what causes the slipping which I've not seen on any other videos on Bafang so in effect it has two clutches this is what some people call a, a one-way bearing or a roller bearing or a clutch bearing so in effect it has two clutches this one in this and the bigger clutch in here which does the click with the pedaling as you can hear from that, the bigger clip you get for that. So in effect it's got two clutches. 
and um, problem solved. So I'll stick it all back together, and that should be it. So we put it on the, this back thing that holds it steady in place, and do up the bolts in there, put the gasket back in, put the cranks on, and that should be it. Alright, I hope that's solved some people's problems because I couldn't find it anywhere else online how to fix this. So yeah, this is a 1000 watt one, so um, I presume it'd be similar for the other ones. Alright, thanks for watching. See you next time on MarkCycleRepairs.com.